unless you have a requirement for the microservices architecture, uh, don't use it because it's going to cost more. So the next one would be microservices cost too much. Who'd have thunk that? Um, microservices containers, you know, cloud native development were, were basically a development religion for a long period of time. And it really, it's that kind of remains today. But early on, I realized that if you're going to build systems in using microservices, <clears throat> that they're going to use many of the uh, services in very inefficient ways. And so in other words, using underlying resource such as cloud computing. So if you build a microservices based system, depending on how you architect it, it's going to cost about 10, sometimes 20 times the amount to operate them based on the consumption of resources because of what microservices are. And so it's the architecture in terms of building systems around very small, fine-grained services, which allows you some flexibility in how you leverage these technologies. And obviously it's bound to containers and you know, bound to, you know, bound to cloud native development, you know, all those sorts of things. And didn't see the cost advantage in doing that. In fact, there's a deficit there. So in other words, you're going to move to microservices because you believe that they're going to have some sort of an architectural advantage. You're going to be able to leverage into business value. Um, you're going to have to pay for it. And so many of the organizations who built their systems using microservices uh, ended up moving them back to a monolithic architecture because the cost was way too high and they didn't necessarily need it as a business requirement. So my guidance today is much the same. Unless you have a requirement for the microservices architecture, uh, don't use it because it's going to cost more.